welcome back. Here's part two of the Battle of Cold Harbor. And uh, obviously the, the battlefield has opened up a bit. Now, as I'm looking at this, I want to take a look at what we need to hold in order to actually win the battle. Because I don't believe it is necessary to hold everything. particular I'm thinking about Old Cold Harbor, Bethesda Church, Beulah Church all need only one of them needs to be held. So I'm thinking there's not a reason to have my line extended all the way down like this to hold an objective that isn't necessary to the battle. I think I can consolidate my troops and better defend. So that's Beulah Church up there which I don't need. Old Cold Harbor right there. What's the other one? Bethesda Church. Which I don't even see right now. Now, uh, alternatively, of course, there's Magnolia Woods, Shady Grove Road. Only need to hold one of them, plus all these others. So I'm going to go ahead and pull all these guys back here at least to right there I don't even know what this objective is obviously his lines are a lot closer right here now I pulled McKean out put a bigger brigade in there same down here Still choppy like it was before. In fact, it's even worse now. I'm shifting some units up here. A few different places. I'm going to pull all these guys back. Again, there's no need to be sticking out like this. So I'll pull them all back and then I'll kind of organize this defense. And there's not really a whole lot happening at the moment, so I'll go ahead and... Uh, kind of drop out of the video and when he starts to assault I'll come back in all right so there's about two hours left in this particular mission of the battle he's taken Turkey Hill which depending on which path to victory I take if I take this first one I need Turkey Hill in order to win and that's the more defensive path uh, if I choose to go this middle route, I have to advance and take at least one of these objectives at some point. So I'm thinking that maybe taking Turkey Hill back is probably the easiest option. So I've merged a couple of these units here. And I'm going to go ahead and start advancing slowly. And we'll see what all he's got over here. And we'll see if we can't go ahead and take Turkey Hill back. In the meantime, it appears... He's starting to advance up here. He's got some sharpshooters going here. And you can see the game is once again running kind of choppy. I'm going to go ahead and start letting my artillery open back up. since he's starting to advance. 
I'm going to send this cavalry down too, over here. All right, so far I'm not seeing anything at Turkey Hill. I'm sure he's got somebody up there. It may just be as simple as he put a unit there, took the objective, and then left. It appears that's the case. So we'll go ahead and take it back. And I'll go ahead and drop some units in here to hold it. see what's going on up here. He's slowly advancing. Looks like he's shifting some troops up to the left. Nothing major. So if anything major happens, I'll drop right back in. But right now, it's just a matter of watching him shoot up a brigade or two here and there. All right, so here we go again. Another brigade venturing out into the no man's land for no particular reason other than to get shot to pieces. I have a feeling the uh, the next part of the battle is where we're going to see the major assault coming in. You can see the choppiness is a little better. In between, uh, while I've been recording, I went in and, and made a couple of changes to my video recording software to... Uh, kind of ease the burden that that software was taking on my processor and that seems to have helped a lot with the increased hardware needs of the game now that they've slightly tweaked the graphics all right so it looks like we're pretty solid here at the moment let's take a look numbers wise we've got about a 6,000 man advantage on the battlefield that's obviously going to both of those numbers are going to increase here in a minute because I think we're about to expand the battlefield to include the whole thing. But I still expect the main part of the attack is going to come right here in this area. Just looking at some of the numbers, my third course taking about 11% losses so far. Second core hadn't lost anything in this particular fight so far. And I think, yeah, there's my first core, General. 3%. I'm keeping my, my guns well supplied. All right, we're back to the left flank now. Should be in pretty good shape here. Just look at the numbers. Yeah, I've got him by about 5,000 men. And so here, uh, we just got to hold the contested left flank. And that'll basically give us all green check marks here. As far as what we need to hold to win the battle. The left flank's kind of... It feels like it's isolated. It feels like it's a separate part of the battle compared to the rest. 
And of course, here's where we could advance, take Bethesda Church, and and win in an alternative way, because that's one of the objectives here that you could win the battle with. But in this case, I'm not going to do that. And I'll go ahead and drop out again, just because there's nothing really happening. And if he decides to assault or something, then I'll come back in. Alright, so very little, absolutely nothing really happened on the left here. I did pull these units back just because they were being fired on and losing casualties unnecessarily. But here we go to the next day. This, I believe, will then be the big Union assault. We'll see how this goes. Just got to hang on for dear life now. Seems to take longer to load these things than it did before, too. All right, so he's only got 65,000 men to my 71. I feel pretty good about that. I don't have a real strong right side. But this, of course, is the big assault that I alluded to earlier that General Grant uh, regretted having made. So now we need to be careful here. Oh, we're spread real thin again out on this side. I hate that. I hate that they do that. I'm going to start pulling all these guys back. Put Benning right here. I'm going to move these guns over here. And once I get all them pulled back, I may merge some of these units. Definitely going to pull these guys back, too. There's just no reason to be out this far. And here what we need to do is get some bigger units on the line. Actually, I'm going to see if I can merge these guys with somebody. I guess not. all these guys are back where they were before. I already moved all these guys once. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift everybody down. I'm going to put McNair all the way up on the left. Move all these other units down one. I'm going to move these Napoleons down to here first and then eventually maybe even further down. here eventually, but for now I'll throw Watson back in there. <clears throat> Alright Perry, not the best spot for you to be kind of out there by yourself. Let's move you back. Brooke and Ross are going to merge here. And I'll throw Ross right in there for now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Alright, he hasn't started the assault yet. Looks like he's going to try to hit me up here on the left.
Where are you going, Grider? I'm going to break off some skirmishers here from Peabody just to fill in this little gap right here. supplies back a little bit. Alright. Well, we got a little bit of an attack going on right here. Mostly just skirmishers it looks like. So we'll go ahead and speed things along a little bit. I'm going to mainly watch right here because this is where I would expect the main attack is supposed to come. But it doesn't appear to be coming. Numbers-wise, I've got him by, what, 6,500 men. See? <clears throat> he really just doesn't have the numbers to make this assault happen. So really, unless... All right, here he comes. He's, he's going for that weak spot where I plugged in the skirmishers, but I've got enough strength around to cover them. So he's going for my left because he knows he can't hit me in the center. So I would say, really, with Cold Harbor, if you've got anywhere near the same number of men as, you, as the Union, then this should be a relatively easy battle for the Confederates as long as you've kind of balanced out your forces and each of the Corps have a decent amount of men. Even being outnumbered by probably 20,000, 30,000 men, this should be a pretty easy battle to win just because of the numbers of casualties that you inflict. So we'll go ahead and speed things along because not a lot happening right now. I'll be curious to see how many reinforcements he gets after this battle. He's really trying to hit that center where those skirmishers are. But between the uh, three-star battery of Napoleons and a couple of decent sized brigades on either side. I've got him pretty well held. Okay, he looks like he's hitting the right again, mostly with skirmishers. Well, here comes a couple of brigades. Yeah, he's really going to try and hit me hard here. Alright, let's bring Sims up. No reason to have him down there. He might actually break through a little bit because of the melee attack on these small brigades. I'm going to bring this cavalry down to help out. Yeah, he's largely avoiding the center. He's hitting me on the flanks, which is smart strategy on his part but unexpected. Gotta pull this battery back. Alright, Benning just dropped back. He got lit up pretty good. We're gonna hold Sims right there for the moment. Double check what's happening on the left. It looks like we're okay. Okay. Oh boy. Sims just got pulled into the maelstrom against about three times as many men as he has. 
He needs to drop back. see what the numbers look like. He's down to just 24,000 men. Oh boy, Perry's going to get hit. He may, he may cease to exist as a unit. I think I need to get some more help down on this side. We'll send this brigade down there. Drop these snipers back before they get hit by a volley. Same with these Napoleons. And they secured Turkey Hill. Oh man, with only 38 minutes to go. This may be a tough job of taking this one back. These these are all pretty small brigades though. some help down here and I think I'll be okay. Especially once Nagel gets there. There goes Forrest. He's done. Eh, he was never much use to me anyway because a three-star unit with a small number of men it was just so expensive to keep him outfitted. All right, let's get get this cavalry out of there. Jeez. Wow, he's pouring everything he's got into taking Turkey Hill back, and it may pay off for him. I just don't have the manpower down here. Too many men there. Run, Fife, run. this battery. No, not you, Fife. So basically what, what happened here is the way that the, the battlefield was set up, this extreme right flank these are the forces that were my second day reserve. So when you're setting up the battle, you have your left and your right corps, and then your third corps, which is only allowed to have 15 brigades in it, is that, that reserve, that reinforcement. And that's what ends up going on your extreme right. And that's why I'm so thin here. Because since they were like a second day reinforcement, I basically threw everything into my left and right corps, and whatever was left over is what I put into this unit. And that didn't leave me enough men to hold this position. So I should have strengthened that. Because the other places I really held with very little trouble. And I, I could have definitely 
sacrifice some of that strength to have made this part stronger. And I think that's what's going to bite me here. Alright, so now where I'm at is because I didn't hold Turkey Hill, I have to go back and take one of these other places over here on the left. I'm going to have to take an objective in order to win the battle. So let's take a look real quick. I'm not holding Turkey Hill, so I've got to take one of these other spots. So we're going to advance right here. There's not too much there, so I should be able to overrun these guys pretty quickly. Oh, look at that. Surprise, surprise. Let's turn the Stonewall Brigade on a brag here. Move up to about right here, and then I'm going to hold. Get right up to the edge of these woods, and then I'll go from there. Let's see. Try to get Fisher overrun, and then we can deal with Robinson. He's holding. The line right here, so we're going to have to try and get through them, I think. I'm going to pull Haney back. I don't really feel like I need to go there. I'll just have him cover my flank. So I'm going to pull Stonewall back too. I don't, eh, too late. He's already got caught into that. And he's been routed. I was going to, I just need to hold him here in the woods. I don't need to advance him. I just need this objective here. Brooke can go right there and stop. Meredith can go right here and stop. We've got the objective, so McGowan can pretty well stop there too. And then we'll just turn the Orphan Brigade up. And just need to get Haney in these woods and stopped. Here comes Hoff. All right, good. The Stonewall Brigade recovered. Let's get him turned. All right, now we're just going to need to deal with this up here for the next hour and 46 minutes. I'm actually going to pull Powell back over here. Hmm. 
Hmm. I'm going to bring the Orphan Brigade down here and get into Bragg's rear. Let's play out for a few minutes here. We'll see what happens. Things should be in pretty good shape here. So with me taking Bethesda Church, that other objective becomes irrelevant as I've got everything else I need to win victory. We'll go ahead and speed things along here. I'll send the Orphan Brigade up to help out. I'm in a good, strong defensive position everywhere along the line. at the numbers. I've got them by about 8,000 men. That's only going to continue to change in my favor. I think I might come over after this brigade, or after this battery here. Slow things down while I do that. And I'm going to break off a you know, skirmishers go after these supplies. If it'll let me. Doesn't appear it's going to. There we go. The Orphan Brigade lost a lot of casualties doing that, but they did take out that battery. Now I'm going to go grab some supplies. Looks like we're solid up here. Great supply chase continues. We gotta go up and get this brigade, before, this battery, before he lights up the orphan brigade even further. Come on, guys, get those supplies. I don't think they're gonna catch them. They're slowly getting there. I may run them all the way into the corner of the map before I grab them, though. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna pay for it too. Run, run away. He sent a he sent a whole brigade after me. That's not gonna end well. All right, let's go ahead and overrun these sharpshooters.
Okay, we'll go ahead and reattach the Orphan Brigade Sharpshooters now. Or Skirmishers now. Let this thing play out for 17 more minutes. Alright, I gotta be careful here because he may send a unit up here to take this objective back because I'm getting greedy. So let's run these guys back down. Yeah, I should have just kept these guys back where they were, too. I got a little careless. Alright, one minute left. And now the battle continues on the right flank. Alright, so here we go into the last part of Cold Harbor. Just need to hang on for dear life now. I do not need to retake this objective here, so um, drop back, guys. We don't need it. Go ahead and pull back as much as I can. All right, and at this point, I outnumber them about two to one here on the battlefield, and I could probably press this and really do some damage, but I think I'm going to be pretty content with how things are going to end up as they are. So let's go ahead and speed things along and just kind of keep an eye out on the mini-map here of what's happening. He's going to press this attack on my right. And that's fine. He can do that all he wants. It doesn't help him win the battle. As you can see, I've got Bethesda Church and I've got everything else here. And as long as I don't lose 40% of my army, which I'm not going to, I should be okay. It's hard to believe this was actually a brigade at one time, but it was. Bring, bring a brigade down here. Honestly, considering I was able to take that objective up in the north, I probably was better off just to pull these guys completely back to this line here. So if 
if there's one thing I would definitely do differently, because this battle could have gone a lot better for me than it has, um, I would have just planned on taking that objective on the left side to begin with and completely abandoned all of this, which I'm going to go ahead and do now. And just held the line right here. That's a much more defensible position. It's much closer to the rest of my line. And I probably would have lost far fewer men. I'm going to bring Newell down here to try to slow him down a little bit. Some of these units are going to get overrun trying to get away. Some of them aren't even moving in the right direction. <laughs> this way, guys. Come on. So definitely kind of a disaster on the right. Honestly, even more so than what I just mentioned. Oh, he just hit me with cavalry that's what happened there even more so than the ground I chose to defend I, I should have put more men into that third corps that only had 15 brigades put a couple of stronger brigades there that would have changed everything that happened on this side because let's be honest I'm going to win the battle but my right flank has been a complete disaster in this battle And there are a lot of things I could have done to do that differently. In fact, I may go back and replay this battle and just implement those changes I'm talking about just to see how they affect things. Because I think I'm going to lose everything that was over here. Yeah, I'm going to lose that battery. And I'm going to lose what's left of these two brigades here. But, I still outnumber them two to one. But see, you can see how much better a defensive position this is right here. since I don't need to hold this objective because of the other one, well, you get the point. Alright, so we're just going to hang on here until the end, and I'll come back and we'll see how it all ended up. So he's making a little bit of an advance on me here. It's not going to amount to much, but I thought I'd come back in just because things are a little interesting here at the moment. He just doesn't have enough men. So as this kind of gets down into the last half hour, just to kind of recap... Because uh, there's a lot in this battle that I did wrong that you can learn from as far as what not to do. And so if I'm just kind of recapping from the top. Number one, don't overload your, your left and right side and basically just leave what's left in your reinforcements when you're doing your build for this battle. 
because those reinforcements become the basis for your extreme right flank later in the battle. And if you don't have much there, it gets ugly there. Second thing is, don't worry about the, the extreme right flank. Pull, pull back to this line of defense right here from the very beginning, and then just plan on taking that Bethesda church on the left flank. It, it wasn't that hard to do. And it's way easier to do that and then hold this line than it is to try and hold a really long defensive line all the way out here. So I think if I do that, my casualties are probably six or 8,000 fewer than the, what they're going to end up being in this battle. So I'm probably going to replay that just to see how that turns out. But that's my operating theory with this. So this was not my finest battle. End result is still a victory, but it's an ugly one for sure. All right, so here we have it. That's the end. Let's go ahead and take a look at things. He actually slightly had more men than me. And honestly, really, I mean, this is still <laughs> really good if you think about it. 14,000 infantry, 1,600 uh, of the artillerymen, and 578 cavalry. And you look at what he lost, and it's still just really, really good for me. But it, it could have been so much better. But I captured 7,000. Harper's Ferry 1855s, I captured 16 10-pound parrots, captured almost 2,000 1861s, grabbed 24,000 supplies. So there's a lot still to like in how this all ended up. But I can't help but somehow still feel a little bit disappointed like I could have done so much better because of that collapse of my right flank. So, But I've said enough about that, so let's go ahead and just take a look briefly at where things stand moving forward and we're now in kind of the end game of the war there's not a lot left to be fought definitely seems like the load screens are taking longer now with the update than they did before okay so we gained 25 reputation is there anything i can actually spend it on there is good because i had nothing a few all right well he lost 40,000 men and then gained 74,000. So <laughs> there you have that. Once again, it seems to have mattered very little that I inflicted overwhelming casualties because he just got a ton of men again. So now you see his army's at 120 to 125,000. And of course, that's what's probably going to be facing me at Washington. But first, we have Harden Pike and Hall's Ferry, which are very interesting battles to fight, but I have a pretty good strategy for both of them. So we'll see how that all goes. But in the meantime, I've got 15,000 men available to me there. I've got another... Wow, my second corps has got 1,400 men left because they got so shattered in that battle. Um, so I've got about 55,000, 60, 70,000 men available to me to take into these last couple of battles. We're going to do Hall's Ferry Road first. Let's take a look at how many we can take into this one. And how many we're going to be facing. All right, so this is that major assault that kind of gets really interesting. 45,000 men I'm going to be facing. Not going to be easy, but I can take 50 brigades, so I should be able to overwhelm him with numbers. So there you have it. As always, I welcome your input. Um, I've already criticized myself enough, so feel free to pile on if you want to. Um, but you can kind of add your own thoughts on the battle. And I'll come back here in the next day or two with Hall's Ferry Road. And we'll go on from there. As always, thanks for watching. If you hit that thumbs up, I greatly appreciate it. We'll see you again soon.